This video is going to focus on modulus questions in the Tamura. Um, I'm going to call these mod functions. I know lots of people call them absolute values or whatever. No one's criticized me too hard in the past for just calling these mods, so I'm just going to call them mods. Um, we'll concern ourselves with questions a bit like this. Um, I'll put the, all the question numbers and paper references in the in the, uh, in the the video. Um, the only thing that I really have to say straight up though is 99% of the time you've got to think sketching. Um, there is one question at the end of this video that I'm going to do without sketching, but if you see a mod function in Tamura, you're just going to immediately think sketching. Um, that's probably the most efficient tactic available to you. Um, so, okay, well, if, I, if that's my advice then, well, how do we sketch these things? And now this is not the most, um, this is not going to be the, the, the most efficient way of sketching every single time, but it is a way of sketching it that makes it work every single time. And this is uh, how I'm going to sort of think about and define a mod function. So mod of x is here. What I'm going to say is if x is positive, so here's a couple of examples that are here. Um, if x is positive, we're not going to do anything. Mod of x just equals x if x is greater or equal to zero. And it equals minus x if x is less than zero. Now there are lots of other ways to think about what mod functions are, and I'll, and I'll talk about one of them at the end of this video. But this is a really good way of thinking about it if you just want to do a sketch. Um, so for example here, 5 is greater or equal to 0, so this function here just equals 5, as we know. Here, five is minus 5 sorry, is less than 0, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the mod function times this number here by minus 1. So it becomes minus minus 5, which of course is 5. So let's think about mod functions as something that does nothing at all if x is greater or equal to 0, and times it by minus 1 if x is less than 0. This is really helpful for sketching, right? So, for example, let's sketch this thing here, x mod x. Now, over here in our graph, this area here, x is greater than 0. Um, so what I can say is, this graph here is just x times x, right? Because the mod function doesn't do anything if x is greater than 0, which is, of course, just x squared, and I can plot x squared, right? It's just a curve like this, except we only care about the area where x is greater than 0. So we only care about this right-hand side. So it's just going to look like that. So of course, normally x squared looks like this, but I only care about this area. And now over here, x is less than 0. So this mod function is going to be minus x. And so this graph is going to be y equals x times minus x, which is minus x squared, which is, of course, usually is an upside-down curve like this. But again, we only care about this area. And so it ends up looking like that. So again, this isn't the most efficient way ever to sketch mod functions, but it is a way that pretty much always works. And, and in Tamura, at least, I haven't found a case where it doesn't really work very well. And we can also do this if we're given an implicit function like this, because the rules for mod of x are the same for rules of mod of y. Um, so if we get out our sketch over here in this quadrant, so not just thinking about halves, in this quadrant, both x and y are positive. So neither of these mod values do anything um, which means that we can just write like this, we can rearrange and we see a straight line gradient minus 1, y-intercept 1, only in this quadrant, right? So normally the line would look like this, with y-intercept 1 here and then this value is also 1, but we're only drawing in this quadrant. And then we move on to the next quadrant, down here. Now x is still positive over here, but y is negative. So this mod function doesn't do anything, because x is positive over here, but this mod function times is y by minus 1. So we end up with this. And then, of course, we rearrange and we end up with this straight line, which has gradient positive 1 and y-intercept negative 1. So it ends up looking like this, this line here, just chopped off to be in this quadrant. And we keep working our way around, and we end up with this nice square um, that I've drawn horribly, but it, it's it's fine. And then the question was just asking about the area enclosed. So we do a bit of Pythagoras to work out that this length is root 2, and then we square that to get 2 in total. Right. Um, so again, this, this idea works even if it's an implicit function is all I was really showing there. Um, so a question like this, exactly the same idea. So we can think about what the sketch would look like. It's an integral problem, so a sketch is never going to be a bad idea to draw. Um, over here, x is positive, and so this mod function does nothing. Um, and so the function is just that, where the x is just the mod x. We expand that out if we want to. It's an upside down quadratic with roots at 1 and 0. So two roots here and it's upside down so it looks a bit like this. But again we only care about the graph over here because we're defining x to be positive for this to happen. So we just ignore that area there or that part of the curve there. And then back over here we say x is less than 0 and we replace that with a minus x because that's what the mod function does in this definition. Uh, we expand that out and we end up with a positive looking quadratic so it goes like this, with roots again at 1 and 0. So it looks a bit like that, but again, I only care about that graph in this area here. So I don't care about any of that section there, and we end up with this. And now we can see, well, okay, to do this integral here, what I could do 
is I could just split this integral between 0 and minus 1 when the function is behaving like this, right, and just integrate that, and then between 0 and 3 where the function is behaving like this and integrate that. So notice I'm integrating two different functions here because over here the function or the graph itself is this one and over here it's this one. So I'm doing two different things here. Of course, if you compute all of this, I can't bother to do it right now, but you'll get the answer of f, or at least you should do. Um, okay, so let's keep going with this. So what about this one here? Um, so, okay, well, this is interesting because my, my method doesn't really work that well for sketching this one because it's not a mod x, it's a mod x minus 2. But that's okay because the function just mod x, of course, when x is positive, it's just the line x, so it's y equals x, which is like this. And when x is over here negative, it's just minus x, and y equals minus x looks like this. So that's that function, clearly. Um, but of course, x minus 2 modded is just this function shifted two places to the right. So it's going to look like this with a, a, a point 2 here. Right? So we can draw these ones if we just think of them as transformations of this one. Um, and that, that will be that. Um, now, what about this one here? Well, okay, so again, let's, let's think about plotting or, or sketching this. Um, it's got a y-intercept of 1, clearly. But let's say, focusing on over here, mod x doesn't do anything. It's just ax plus 1. Um, so, okay, this is, well, it's a line, clearly. It's got y-intercept of 1, which is here. And now, if a was positive, like 2x plus 1, it would be over in this direction. Now, the other really great thing about sketching graphs is you can completely turn this inequality question into just a inspection looking at it problem. Like, what I'm saying here is if I sketch both of these things here, what I want is I want this sketch to always be beneath, lower than, or the same as, this one here. So I'm looking for this sketch of this graph to always be underneath this one. And that's how we can think of inequalities once we sketch them. We just want this one to be underneath this one. So, okay, I want this line. I don't want this line to head off in this direction, which it would if A was positive. I want it to clearly head in this direction off here, um, which it would if A was negative, right? If A was like negative 5x plus 1, then the graph would be in this direction all of it. Of course, I only care about this area, though, here. So, okay, let's make A negative. And now, what's the biggest thing I can make A, or the smallest thing? Well, it, it, clearly, a, a really big value of A, like minus 100, would make it very steep like this. And I can get away with all values of A until I get to about this one here, where it intercepts the graph at this point, too. And, of course, what's the value of A here? Well, this is uh, the point 1, so the gradient of this is 1. Rise is 1 over 2 across. And so this is A is minus a half is the gradient. And let's just check that works on this side. When x is less than 0, um, this graph here becomes minus ax plus 1 because this becomes a minus x. Of course, if a is negative, which I'm, I've am i argued that it needs to be, negative times negative equals positive, and this becomes a positive gradient. So it goes off in this direction. But again, I only care about this area down here, so it looks a bit like that. And so therefore, the graphs work. This, this graph here, this a mod x plus 1, is always beneath or the same as this graph up here. And so this is the value I'm going to need to be beneath or equal to. And so the answer would be a, a e in this case. Um, so again, sketching super powerful, not only because um, we can sketch these mod functions, but also because we can turn inequality questions into just inspection, looking at when it's lower or higher than the other one. Um, so useful, super useful trick there. And lastly, let's look at a question where sketching actually probably doesn't work so well. Um, now, you probably could sketch this. I haven't really put too much thought into exactly how you could. You could maybe think about some graph transformations here from the mod x and the mod y functions. But what is easier to do in this case, actually, is just consider the, the mod functions for what they are. Um, in, uh, and, and some of you might just be able to think about, OK, well, what's the biggest value of x that this could be to make this work? Well, OK, if x was like all the way up at, uh, at 8, 2 minus 8 is minus 6, but modded is plus 6, which is less than or equal to 6. So 8 is the biggest thing. This could be 2 minus 9 is, is minus 7, but modded is 7, which isn't less than. So x, the biggest x would be is 8. But perhaps an easier way to think about it is to, to redefine the mod function as um, the distance, or, or at least a mod function with two things in it like this, as the distance from this to this. Right, that's what the mod, that's an alternative definition of the mod function. Um, and just to give you an example, when you were like in year one, you learnt to do this by saying, well, what's the distance on the number line between five and two? There are three places, so the answer is three. But likewise, of course, because the mod function doesn't care about um, negatives in the end, the, if you're doing this question, of course, we know from year six or seven that the answer to this is minus three, 
but of course 2 minus 5 modded is 3 because again the distance is still just 3 like the distance between this and this is still 3 because distance doesn't care about positives or negatives so we can redefine this as the distance from this one to this one so looking at this we can say okay what this whole thing is saying is we want an x value such that the distance from 2 to x is less than or equal to 6 should have said or equal to here but it doesn't really matter um, so okay just picture a number line you know, like what's what's the biggest x can be and what's the smallest x can be for the distance to 2 to be less than or equal to 6 well it's going to be 8 to minus 4 isn't it like th that's the distance 6 either side from 2 um, and likewise this one now this one's a bit more fiddly because it's got a plus in the middle but we can be super sneaky and this is very useful in complex analysis as well when you define modulus of complex numbers and, and so on and sketch complex numbers we can redefine this to be y minus minus 2 and then we can think of it as the distance from y to minus 2. So we're thinking we want the distance from y to minus 2 to be less than or equal to 4. Um, so, okay, 4 either side of minus 2 is minus 6 to 2. And now, of course, the answer, the, the question is saying, what's the greatest value of mod xy? Now, of course, the mod means that even if I shove negatives into here, it's not going to matter because, of course, the answer will always be positive. So I just want to put the two biggest numbers I can into here possible. And the biggest number I can put for x in is 8. And the biggest sort of value of a number I can put in for y, this should be a y, sorry, y should range from this to this, is minus 6. And 8 times minus 6 is minus 48, but modded is positive 48, and that would be our answer there. So there's an alternative way of doing that. If you want to try and give that question a go by sketching, you can do, but the key theme of this video, I think, is always do a sketch. If you want to sketch it in the way that I sketch it, by breaking it up into the positive and the negatives, um, please do. It works really well, I think. There are other things you can do, but the moment you see a mod function in a Tamiya paper, just think sketching. I can't guarantee that it will work every single time, like this one is better thought of in another way, but the vast majority of the time, the sketch will get you the answer. Um, so just associate mod functions when you get into the paper with a sketch, try and do a sketch as quickly as you can, and that should yield the answer. Um, anyway, so thank you for watching.